Hello, everyone, and welcome to Challenge 5, the Trial of the Nets. Let's start off with the size. This is a 19 by 19 board, so three spaces larger in each direction from the last game. This does mean it is an odd number and as such has a middle row on the row right after your promotion line, which as normal is right where your pawn line is, so right here for both players. But right behind your pawn line, we start with the non-symmetry. You can see on the left side we have a Tengu, and on the right side we have a Hook Mover. The only other non-symmetry is a left chariot on the left side of your board, and a right chariot on your right side of the board. Next up, we've got in this row a interesting setup where we have a Rakshasa, a Wrestler, Divine Guardian, and Yaksha, all right here kind of just a bunch of non-symmetry pieces, and this is because they are a set of four pieces that all promote to the Heavenly Tetriarch. Now, this can be really important later in later games, but for now, just note that this, this uh, section of four pieces will come back, and they will always kind of be near each other. You've also got on this row, non-symmetry-wise, a gold cannon on the right side, whereas a silver cannon is on the left side, and over here we've got a rat snake, whereas on the other side you have an old rat. Next row down, you've got the typical Kirin and Phoenix non-symmetry, but you also have a western star on the left and an eastern star on the right. Next row down, we've got the she-devil on the left and a dove on the right, and in a similar vein right next to it is the blind bear on the right and the reclining dragon on the left. And the final row down, we've got some nine symmetry with the Diva on the left and the Dark Spirit on the right. That is all for the non symmetry. Of course, like always, it is a flipboard, not mirrored, and as such, your non symmetry will be opposite as your opponent. And you have one more empty space at the beginning, so five, because it is trial five. On each side, you'll have five empty spaces. Now let's hop into the recap of the pieces from the previous games that are returning.
before we get into all of the new pieces, I first want to discuss one of the new movement types, which is the hook moves. Now, this is the hook mover, but the new movement type here, which is called the hook move, can also be on the diagonals, as you can see over here, is uh, a slightly new, unique movement type that will be used a lot, especially in this game, as it's being introduced in this game. But it's a little difficult to understand, and I want to make sure that it's well understood before I get into some of the new pieces, because a lot of them have hook moves, whether it's in the base mode or in the promotion variant of the piece. So the basic premise of a hook move is it can move in the direction, it can range in the direction that the movement is in. So for example, the hook mover can hook move in all the orthogonals. So it can make a range move in this direction, and during its range, it can at some point turn and make a 90 degree turn and then range in that direction as well. This does not allow it to capture multiple pieces with its movement. So for example, this hook mover could move, say, here, and then make its hook there, and then move over here and stop here. There are many different ways in which it can do this. Uh, for example, I have right here trained out basically where the hook mover can move in this scenario. So this is just a 15 by 15 board, and I just threw some random pieces in here. It's actually kind of the setup for trial three, but that's not important. Point is, if we look here, we can see how the hook mover moves. So the big red lines indicate the initial range that it can make. And then at each intersection, it can make its hook move and start moving on the, uh, on the 90 degree turn portion. So as you can see here, if we go this direction and we hook this way, we can't stand on top of our friendly unit, so we have to stop here. It can also stop here or here, or it could hook in the other direction and stop at any of these squares. We go farther and it could hook to it to capture one of these pieces, or this piece. For example, it could hook like this to capture this piece. Although it would not be able to hook this way and capture this piece because its friendly unit, again, is in the way. It could hook over this way to capture this unit, or go farther and capture this unit. But it could not capture this knight, because if it goes this direction to hook towards the knight, this piece is in the way. And if it goes this way, this piece is in the way. So it does not control the entire board, but it has a lot of range in, in dynamics to how it can move. For example, it can capture this piece and this piece and this piece in two different mannerisms. That is like this or like this. Again, like this or like this. And same for this piece. Basically, it has a lot of options and defending against a hook mover, especially on a big open board like this one, is a little more difficult. Especially since this board uh, for the actual trial five is going to be a, a lot bigger although there's a lot of pieces. If you can, you know, tone down the amount of pieces by capturing a lot, making a lot of trades, or wait till the end game and bring in this unit out, it can be really strong. On the other hand, the Tengu over here, which basically has the same movements except on the diagonals, it also has these step moves so it can change colors, is a lot more effective for when the area is crowded. As you can see, it doesn't control quite as much space as the hook mover because it's diagonal, uh, because of because of its diagonal movement. So it's only controlling all the white squares right now. It could move onto this dark square and then control all the dark squares uh, on the reverse, of course. Uh, again, it cannot go through its buddy, so if it went this way and then hook moved this direction, it, had, it would have to stop here because the hook moves in the way. And likewise, over here, it would only be able to get to this space or this space because its buddy is in the way. Now, notably, uh, the Dragon Knight here is just highlighted because the Tengu can just make a normal range capture also, just like a normal bishop. It doesn't have to make the hook, but it is allowed to. And as such, it could also capture like this, you know, hooking this way and then making it 90 degree and attacking this piece. Or this piece. Or this piece in two different directions, meaning that if you were putting pressure on this piece right here, you could not block by moving a piece here because it could also capture this direction. You'd have to move the piece itself. Also notably, you cannot land on this piece and then make a hook because it must stop once it makes its capture. It cannot capture multiple pieces with its hook move. Uh, that's basically how hook moves work. They're kind of complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it feels really nice to use, and eventually you will understand it very well, as you'll be using hook movers throughout the rest of the games. They are starting lineup in every game from now on out. The 
first new piece we'll be talking about is another general. We've got the tile general this time. Simple, makes one move behind it or step moves in front to the diagonal directions. A very simple piece and like many of the other generals it will promote to a gold general. This piece will be a lot more useful when you have your trumpet general back, but we won't see that until the final trial. Next up we'll be talking about another fodder piece that starts up near the front of your board, the same line as your pawn line. This is the donkey. It has orthogonal step moves in every direction and then can make a jump move either in front of it or behind it. The donkey is overall a pretty good space taker, especially for a fodder piece being in front. And its promotion is pretty strong, it is the flying cat. The flying cat holds very strange space. It has a new movement variety, which is the triple jump. Uh, and by triple jump, I mean it jumps to the third space instead of the second one. As you can see, the diamond represents jumping over two spaces. So one, two, it lands here. And as such, this this triple diamond represents jumping over three spaces. So one, two, three, and lands here. It has this in every direction except behind it, and behind it has three step moves, or a step move diagonally behind it and a step move directly behind it. This is overall a pretty good promotion, especially for a fodder piece, but again, fodder pieces will generally either be traded or not used very much except for defending pieces in general. And as such, you probably won't be seeing this piece much. Next up we've got the Chinese Rooster, another simple step mover. It has step moves orth uh, orthogonally in to the sides and behind it, and diagonally in front of it. Uh, just another simple step mover, but if you do promote it, it becomes the Wizard Stork. This is a really good promotion for a step mover, gaining quite a bit of range in all the diagonals, plus right in front of it, as well as holding still a step behind it. Old Monkey, similar to the Chinese Rooster, as you can see, the Chinese Rooster is the upside down Old Monkey, and vice versa. Uh, again, step moves in the directly in front of it, to the sides of it orthogonally, and then diagonally behind of it. And it promotes to an upside down Wizard Stork, the Mountain Witch. Which, like I said, same moves as a Bishop, but instead of being in front, it is a behind range and a step move in front of it. Now, I talked about this in the last video when I discussed the Wrestler and Divine Guardian, but there's two more pieces that promote to Heavenly Tetriarch. That would be the Yaksha as one of them, which has a step move diagonally in front of it and orthogonally behind it, as well as a limit range of three spaces to these sides. This is a very protective piece, but will still be considered a side quest piece because its promotion, the Heavenly Tetriarch, is very strong. As well as the diagonal counterpart of that last piece, we've got the Rakshasa, which has a orthogonal step moves to the side and behind of it, and in front it has a limit range of three spaces on the diagonals. Another piece that will promote to the Heavenly Tetriarch. Blind Bear has diagonal step moves and can retreat easily with this uh, ranging behind it move, so keeping your Blind Bear protected isn't necessarily the hardest. And you might want to try to promote this piece. It sounds like a really hard task, especially where it starts in the starting lineup being on basically your last rank, but its promotion is the Emperor. 
And as you can see, the Emperor does, has no moves. It, it can't move. But it has a new aspect. That aspect being the Emperor's move. The Emperor is allowed to move to any space on the board. That is what it does. It is not allowed to capture a royal piece with this movement. Other than that, it may do whatever it likes with its move. So instead of moving normally, you may pick up your Emperor and place it anywhere you wish on the board, including capturing a strong piece, including just moving it out to safety. The Emperor is one of the strongest pieces in the game. It is probably top three strongest pieces in the game. You'll, you'll see later that I, I there's like at least there's about three pieces that I would put as the strongest pieces in the entire game. This is one of them. Although it is just a promotion right now for the blind bear, but it is very powerful and should be a threat that you keep in mind. Do not let your enemy march their blind bear into your back line because that is problematic for you. On the other side of the board, in the same space that the blind bear was, we have the reclining dragon. Now, the reclining dragon has very similar forward movement as it has orthogonal moves in all directions and diagonally behind it. So basically an upside-down gold general. The reclining dragon's promotion is the great dragon. Now, this supports some hook moves, which I talked about earlier. As you can see, it has a hook move diagonally behind it and di uh, orthogonally behind it as well. Other than that, it has a tier 2 cannon move diagonally in front of it, a limit range of 2 in front of it, and then step moves to the sides. A very strong piece overall. Next up, we'll be talking about the Old Rat, which a little bit of a theme going on, as you saw, the Reclining Dragon was an upside-down gold general. This is kind of like an upside-down copper general, with orthogonal spaces in front and behind of it, and diagonal spaces behind it as well. Its promotion is the Birds of Paradise. This is a strong hook-moving piece that supports cannon hook moves. Now, I didn't really describe how this would work, but basically, it functions exactly like a normal hook move, except you have to jump over one piece in either the initial movement or the hook movement before you can capture a piece. It moves exactly like a regular hook mover or would in the fact that it can, you know, just move normally. But in order to capture a piece, it must hop a piece. And you might also notice that there are step moves on the diagonals, which you didn't, which you won't see on the hook mover. But that is because it's a cannon piece, or at least it has cannon moves. There would be no manner to capture a piece right here if there was no pieces right here or here. So it has just a tad bit extra power in case it gets attacked right here, and there's no can uh, there's no pieces to jump over and hook. You can still just make a normal diagonal capture with this piece. Next up, we'll have the old rat's counterpart, the rat snake, which is an upside down silver general. It has diagonal moves on all the directions and an orthogonal move directly behind of it. And its promotion is the murder of crows. In the same way that the birds of paradise had cannon hook moves on the orthogonals, this has cannon hook moves on the diagonals. Again, it also has these supporting step moves, but this is more generally going to be used to just reposition its color, as currently it can only attack on the blacks, but if you were to move it at one space this direction, it would attack on the whites instead. Next up, we've got the Diva. Now, this is kind of a strange piece, and you'll see the Dark Spirit also has a strange movement type, but mirrored. Uh, it can move in all of the diagonal directions, and it has a orthogonal move to the left and an orthogonal move behind of it. 
little bit of a strange piece. Its promotion is the Tranquil Soul, which is quite the promotion. As you can see, it goes from a step mover that can barely touch the area around it to a piece that is the combination of a queen and a lion dog. Now, as now you might not know what the lion dog does yet because I haven't explained it, but you can probably guess how it works. As you can see, it's got these ranging through the railed triple moves, which, as you've seen in a few other pieces, that just means it can range or do a triple move. And what a triple move in this situation refers to is the fact that it can make an Igui Eat move, move back, or capture one piece, and then a second piece, then move back, or capture all three pieces. Now, in a situation like this, where it has a railed on this side and a railed on this side that are triple move types, it, there is a special maneuver you can make where you can capture a piece right here and then move back and then move back again. So make a capture, one, two. So that's three movements overall. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or just one, two, and reject your last movement. Of course, you can always do the one, two, and reject your last movement anyway, and you can use this railed triple move to jump over your own pieces also. So for example, if there was two pieces, one right here and one right here, you could triple move and land uh, on the other side of both of them without capturing them if they're friendly, of course. Now we've got the Diva's counterpart, the Dark Spirit. Uh, as last time, it has diagonal step moves in all directions, and then an orthogonal step move to the right, and an orthogonal step move behind it. Its promotion is the Furious Fiend. This is a combination between a lion and a queen, and you already know what these would do. I don't need to explain it anymore. A pretty strong piece overarchedly, if you can get your Dark Spirit to the promotion line, that is. Next up, we'll be talking about the Eastern Star. Now, the Eastern Star has a jump move on both orthogonals in front and behind of it, and it has an orthogonal jump move to the right. On the left of it, it has a knight-type move where it can jump either forward two spaces and then to the right, or forward two spaces and then to the left, uh, similar to how the knight moves. Overall, a decent jumping piece. Its promotion is the Taurus which has lots of hook moves, as you can see. It controls or an orthogonal to the right of it hook moving maneuver, and diagonally to the left, both directions, in front and behind of it, it has diagonal potential. A very strong promotion if you can get it to that area, of course. Next up, we've got the Western Star, pretty much exactly the same as the Eastern Star. Its orthogonal jump is to the left instead of the right, and its or and then its uh, knight type movement is to the right instead of the left. And its promotion is the Libra, which, as you can see, it is simply a mirrored version of the Taurus. Next up, we'll be talking about the Three Frogs Singing, a interestingly named piece that has diagonal movements in front of it and a limit range of four spaces orthogonally in front of it. Not a very strong piece, but if you are able to pierce your enemy's backline with it, it turns into quite a, well, a carnage type piece, and you know how well carnage works if you've played the last game. The Ronin is very... I wouldn't say strong. The Ronin has potential to eliminate a lot of pieces before it's captured, especially if you're careful with where you move it. If you're able to get a Three Frogs singing promoted, I would recommend using the Ronin to wreak as much havoc as possible, or bring it back and protect it and try to use it for a strong play. Next 
next up, we'll be talking about the vertical flyer. Ranges in front and behind of it, and it has diagonal step moves in every direction. Its promotion is the Vertical Dragon, which is basically a rook with limit range of four spaces on the sides of it instead of ranging normally. Not the best promotion overall for a piece that's supposed to be breaking into the front lines of an enemy, but it, it can serve its purposes pretty effectively overall, I would say. Silver Cannon, which has diagonal tier 2 cannon moves, which means it jumps over one piece to make a capture, and it has these orthogonal step moves to allow it to change its colored attacking spaces. Its promotion is the Jade Cannon, which simply has tier 2 cannon moves in every direction. Next up, we've got the Gold Cannon, which is similar to the Silver Cannon, except on the orthogonals instead of diagonals. It also has supporting step moves on the diagonals to hold a little bit better space. Its promotion is exactly the same as the Silver Cannon in the Jade Cannon. Like I said, a queen, except instead of regular ranges, it has these Tier 2 Cannon moves. Next up, we'll see the first piece that will begin explaining why this game is called Trial of the Nets. There's two new symbols to show off here. We've got the Tier 1 cannon moves, which we've seen Tier 3 and Tier 2, and we're kind of going backwards to see Tier 1. The Tier 1 cannon moves means that it must jump over one piece to capture a piece, and it must also jump over one piece in order to move. So in order for this piece to move at all on the sides of it, it has to jump over one piece exactly. In front of it, although it has a new movement also, which is the freeze range. Now this means it can range normally as a normal ranging piece in the direction that this is facing, but it also means that any pieces within this range are frozen, meaning they cannot move. So, for example, if there was a rook right here, and there was a piece right here, I could hop over this piece, landing in this location, and my range would freeze that rook. That means that even though the rook can see me with his range, the rook is unable to make a move, meaning it cannot capture the lancing net back. The lancing net is very powerful when it comes to putting pressure on pieces in front of it, but its maneuverability to the sides make it very difficult to use. It has some decent behind it maneuverability when it comes to these limit range of four spaces in all of the behinds it. I would recommend getting this piece forward a bit and then using its behind movement on these diagonals to reposition it to stronger spaces. A very strong piece overall though, and getting this out as soon as possible would definitely benefit your party. Its promotion is the Puppet Master. As you can see, its behind range of four spaces has been replaced with another one of these Tier 1 cannon moves, which makes its backward maneuverability even more difficult to use. Although its diagonal behind a brilliant range of four is still here, and as such, it still has some maneuverability in that direction. Otherwise, it gains the freeze range on the diagonal in front of its range, which is a very strong direction to be having, as that's the direction that the Skyward Net on the enemy team will have, which is a very strong ability. Notably, this piece can now freeze up to three pieces in its range, which is a huge upgrade from the simple one that it had beforehand. A good promotion, although getting it promoted might be very difficult. After it is promoted, though, its backward hop range means that it might have a good time getting behind a piece that it might have been stuck to give it some protection after getting its promotion done. Next up, we'll be talking about the side flyer. Uh, very similar to the side mover, it has 
ranges in both its side directions, or orthogonally beside it, and also diagonal moves in all the diagonals. This is the counterpart to the vertical flyer, of course, and its promotion is the side dragon, which simply replaces its diagonal step moves for an orthogonal direction right in front of it. This is basically a weaker rook, and I would not recommend ever promoting to this piece, as your side flyer will be much more powerful as a defensive piece, as long as you're not attacked by a net, that is. Next up, we'll be talking about the Earthen Net, another one of your pieces that has this freeze range. And this piece is pretty good, especially for protecting your backline from freezing pieces itself. Uh, in front of it, it's got a simple step or jump move, but it's got these freeze ranges to its sides and diagonally behind it. I'd recommend using this jump move to get it past all of your pieces and getting it out in front as quickly as possible. It's very useful for shutting down opponent plays, and you can use it to stop a hook move from infiltrating your base as well. Its promotion is the marionette. Now, a lot of pieces that have strong abilities, I sometimes don't recommend promoting to because they can sometimes be, like especially the Earthen Net, where it is a very protective piece in general. But in this situation, I would recommend promoting your Earthen Net. If you can, even by sacrificing some pieces, get a marionette on the field, especially a marionette that's made of an Earthen Net, you will have a huge advantage because the Skyward Nets are so much stronger than all the other pieces that getting one out of a Earthen Net is really powerful. As such, this marionette has a freeze range in every direction to its diagonals and both of its orthogonal to the side. It loses its step range in front, but it replaces it with a jump and a jump directly behind it as well. Overall, the marionette is a very powerful piece, and I would recommend using it to its fullest. Next up, we'll talk about the right chariot. As you can see, it ranges to the left in front of it and the right behind of it, and it has a step move behind and an orthogonal range in front as well. Its promotion is the Chariot Soldier, which has ranges in every diagonal direction and orthogonally in front and behind of it, and it has limit range of two spaces to its sides. Next up we have the Left Chariot. This is the Right Chariot, but reversed. I, I'm not going to explain it again, you guys can understand that. It has the same promotion also, the Chariot Soldier. Finally, it's time to talk about one of the funnest pieces in this game, the Hook Mover. It moves like a Rook, but twice! I already explained how hook moves work, so again, you can't capture multiple pieces with this maneuverability, but the hook mover's overall space control is so powerful and very useful for either protecting your pieces or launching a full-on attack against a piece that's putting pressure in a weird location. And the hook mover does not promote. Next up we have the Tengu. Similar to the hook mover, it has a hook move in every direction to the diagonals instead of orthogonals this time, and it has step moves on the orthogonals to allow it to change color. Uh, starting Your starting setup, your, both your Tengus, your enemies, and your own will be on the same color. And this is notably important as they can attack each other, and losing your Tengu to the enemy Tengu without the chance of a retake is not a good play. Obviously. <laughs> the Tengu also does not promote.
Skyward Net. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard because the Skyward Net is so much better than the Earthen Net and the Lansing Net. I would rather have a Skyward Net than both a Earthen Net and a Lansing Net combined, <laughs> because the Skyward Net is is that it's that it's that strong. It, like the ability to shut down the diagonals and reposition itself effectively with these sideways freezing moves also allows it to really take space. The only way you can really attack a skyward net is right in front of it. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to avoid those attacks with skyward nets. If you can get both of your skyward nets to the front efficiently and fast, you can quickly shut down your opponent. I had this happen to me in one of the games I was playing. It happened so fast, and I, I was unable to stop it, which was surprising because this game is a lot more methodical than Trial by Fighter. But once they come out, you you can get your movements locked down and completely trap yourself in the net that it creates. I mean, it's called Trial, trial of the Nets for a reason. Skyward Net is by far the strongest piece in this game, and this game has a hook mover in it. Now, the hook mover can attack this piece pretty effectively. In fact, the hook mover, I would say, is one of the strongest ways to shut down a Skyward Net, because from any place, as long as it's not frozen, it can make a hook move and then attack the Skyward Net in front. Or to the sides, of course, hook moves do not get frozen mid-attack. So if you were standing here, you could do this and attack the Skyward Net with a hook mover. Or, for example, if a Tengu is sitting here, it could do this and then hook moves this direction without getting shut down. But if your hook mover or Tengu gets stuck in one of these one of these freeze ranges, they can't move. And that can allow your opponent to use other pieces to capture them. So that if, for example, you've set it up so that your hook mover is here and you have a piece ready to recapture when this skyward deck comes along, the enemy has a chance to perhaps move a rook over here and capture with the rook so that they don't even lose their skyward net in the exchange. It's one of the strongest. It's one of the strongest pieces. It is by far, in my opinion, at the very least, the strongest piece in this game, uh, barring promotions. That is, and its promotion is the same as the Earthen Net, the Marionette. is very powerful when it comes to these these freeze ranges. Don't underestimate the freeze ranges. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Lion Dog. Uh, it's got rail triple moves in every direction. And like I said, in that means, it means you can capture three pieces in one, one turn, or capture a piece, move back, and stay put, or capture a piece, move back two spaces, and get over here. Uh, perhaps you take two pieces and then move back one to avoid an attack. Lots of variability with this piece. And again, it can also jump over friendly pieces, uh, as long as it lands in any of the spaces that are available to it from those locations. Its promotion is the Great Elephant. Now, unlike a lot of other space-creating pieces, the Great Elephant actually fulfills the role of defending a lot better than I would say some do. The Great Elephant loses some attack potential that the Lion Dog had, although if you're using it as a space piece, then this will be actually really helpful, because instead it protects a lot better, and if it ever needs to move forward, it does have this strong range in front of it. As you can see, it ranges in all directions except for diagonally in front of it, and it makes a triple rail move in any direction except for diagonally in front of it, where those diagonally in front of it were replaced with a limit range of up to two spaces. So it's losing out on one space and the ability to capture three pieces on these diagonals and getting those replaced with this strong range in most of the directions that you can go. This piece is situationally useful as a promotion, but overall I would say it is a very useful promotion for a piece if you're using it for what it's intended to be used for. If you're attacking with it, I'd recommend keeping it as a lion dog and just attack with it. Now it's time for the strategy portion of the trial of the nets. Now, the basic concept that this trial will be relating to you is not only to teach you about the freezing units and also to introduce hook moves to the game, it also represents 
the the point in the, the these challenges where you really need to start learning how to swap between fast and slow play. And this last game that I explained, the trial by fire, is an example of a, of one of these challenges that is very fast paced. The uh, fire demons caused you to almost necessarily make moves to sacrifice your own pieces in order to quicken your pace. Because if you were to let your opponent get any tempo advantage on you, it almost certainly means death. That's why they had a lot of pieces that can quickly avoid setup. You know, such as the vice generals, bishop general, and rook general can quickly put up attacks without having to put, make very many moves to set up an attack. Whereas in like, for example, the first three trials, there was a lot more setup necessary because you couldn't move as fast. And even if you could move fast by itself, one piece isn't going to do a lot. That is completely changed in trial four. Now trial five brings us back a little bit on that speed ratio, but still has the potential of having to move fast. For example, a hook mover and tengu are really strong. And if positioned in an effective spot can easily tear through the defenses of, an, of your enemy. But on their own, they are simply one piece. And unlike the fire demons, they cannot protect themselves as effectively. And so now, this game will introduce you to having to swap between that fast play style of making sure you keep everything on top of things and keeping, keeping your tempo up and using a slow play to build up your own defenses. For example, there are two major strategies for how you can actually play this beginning portion, which is to either immediately pull out your strong pieces, such as your Tengu. Now it immediately, you know, controls all of these diagonal spaces. I mean, it basically controls everything on the board. The, that, now obviously that could be a strong opening for you perhaps within the first two moves, but at the same time, bringing it out this early does just make it a target. And you have to remember that putting targets on the board too early can sometimes slow your progression. Now, this is obviously true. For example, bringing your queen out really early in chess is sometimes not effective. It can be useful and it is a strong piece. And if you apply pressure effectively with it, it can be useful. But bringing it out early also means that your opponent has a big pricey piece that they can target and force you to have to move like multiple tempo losing moves. So opening strategy that I would, on the other hand, recommend is something perhaps like this. Slowly and surely bring out your units, especially your step movers. Slowly and steadily building your defense without leaving any holes that your enemies can target. Apply pressure with these nice vertical units. You have a lot of verticality with the vertical movers, the vertical flyer, and your other pieces such as dragon knights can put up great pressure on these strong verticals. Perhaps bring out some of your chariots. Now you see how during all of this, not only do I have a very strong left base defense where most of my boundaries have been blocked off and it would be very difficult for an enemy to initiate an attack on this side, even if they were to strike on the blacks where I have some weaknesses, all of these spaces are protected by a piece one or the other. I've also introduced my Western Star into the midfield at this point, which is a really strong promotion. Again, these things promote to the, uh, the Libra and the Taurus, depending on which side you're on. And these are, these are hook movers on par with the strength of the Tengu and hook mover. Not a bad promotion by any means. And definitely will scare your enemy the closer it gets towards that front. But I've also, by coincidence, unlocked my Tengu at the same time. It's only this line. But on my next move, I could perhaps simply do this. Just to tell my enemy, hey, it's out there now. 
And if they were to make an attack on it, perhaps I can always block with the pawn. I'm really concerned I can move my Tengu back one space and allow my Dragon Horse to instead attack the piece that was attacking it. On the other side of things, I'm gonna explain some other effective strategies for moving some of these pieces out. Your freezing pieces are really strong and if you bring them out in the end game, it'll definitely be effective. Getting both of your skyward nets into the midgrounds can lock down a, your opponent's pieces very effectively. It's happened to me in a past game and it sucks. <laughs> you, you can get locked in a position where you can't move at all and your enemy just keeps gaining tempo, keeps gaining tempo. And that's how this game can, can feel similar to Trial by Fire in the sense that your enemy can lock you down and force you to have to make every move count. Because if you don't make every move count, they're gonna start trading your pieces with less effective pieces because you can't even capture back. Because the piece you were gonna capture back with is frozen. Good way to get out your earthen net early is to move both that go-between and your pawn and bring it out in this manner. You could also, on the next move, move just your go-between and lock it in position. Now it's being protected by two different pieces, and if any piece tries to attack it on this diagonal, you'll have to worry about that. But the attacks from these sides are protected, obviously, by its freezing potential. And given that it can range in both these directions, it can be easily repositioned if an attack does occur, and it can it can bring great support to your mid your mid uh, fighting pieces with its freeze. For example, if you had a nasty princess over here causing some issues on this diagonal, now obviously this is a bad example because of where it is, but let's say it's here. Uh, a simple enough move as this immediately locks down the princess, and if they don't respond fast enough, it can very easily get captured. Point of the matter is, getting out these pieces early might be very effective, but do not forget how effective building a strong castle with your step movers are. If you leave all your step movers on the back lines, it's just going to keep you from getting checkmated for longer, but it won't actually help you win the fight. You need to use all your resources if you want to maintain if you want to maintain advantage and pull a victory out. Because if your opponent brings out all their strong pieces and takes all your strong pieces with them, you have all your step movers left for them to crack away at, but eventually they will pull it off. Whether that by promoting their own pieces or by just chipping away at your defenses with their freezing potential and overarching destructive capabilities. But they won't be able to do that if in order for their strong pieces to get to your strong pieces, they need to first move through those step movers. And in trying to set that strategy to take out the step movers up, you can capitalize on the lack of space they hold given the fact that they aren't using strong step movers. Step movers are strong. They're just strong for the reason that you can sacrifice them. Anyway, moving forward, a lot of these games are gonna have less, less set in stone strategies going forward. And that, that's simply because, again, these games aren't I haven't played these games very much. I don't have as much information to give you about them as I would Trial of Fire, because I've played that many, many times. And uh, tri uh, Trial of Trades, that's a that's a that's basically based on a very real game that many people have played and lots of people know strategy for. Trial of the Crane is a much simpler game in comparison to this, and as such, I know a lot of the strategies that you can impose on your opponent. But the bigger these boards get, the more complicated the strategy is going to become, and the more I'm going to have to give you techniques that you can implement into your strategy rather than actual hard basic things to do. Thank you all for watching the Challenge 5 trial of the Nets. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you would like to see more of my content. I will be continuing on with Challenge 6, Trial of the Swarm. Hope to see you then. Have a nice day. Goodbye.